lights, camera, action. Welcome back to Flick Flash. The Burial, a prime video movie based on a true story, tells the story of a historic court case in which Tommy Lee Jones' character, Jeremiah Joseph O'Keefe, the owner of a funeral home, is assisted by Jamie Foxx's character, Willie E. Gary, an unorthodox and undefeated personal injury attorney, in suing a major burial company for breach of contract. The discussion of the case's verdict and the film's conclusion below will, of course, include major spoilers. Family-oriented Jeremiah O'Keefe wished to continue his father's company. He had 13 children himself, therefore he wanted to pass it on to the next generation. However, O'Keefe finds himself in some trouble when he is forced to work out a deal with a different funeral home firm as a result of a botched insurance agreement. Although it initially seems confusing, Maggie Betts is able to summarize key points from the trial for the audience to grasp. A small-town company owner can't possibly compete with a major conglomerate and prevail, right? O'Keefe decides to try his luck with Willie Gary, a showy attorney who hasn't lost a case in 12 years. The main distinction is that O'Keefe's case is corporate, whereas Gary works in personal injury. The more he gets to know O'Keefe, the more he believes in the case. So Gary takes the case to show that he can do anything. What starts out as a little business against big business conflict turns into a legal moral conflict. Gary doesn't only talk about how the Lowen Group exploits smaller businesses, his team delves a little bit deeper, and it turns out to be much more. The Black National Baptist Convention and the Lowen Group reached an agreement that allowed the Lowen Group to purchase the NBC cemeteries. In order to sell the burial contracts in impoverished regions, Lowen would use black church employees as sales reps. After that, he would raise the rates. Does the burial have a real-life basis? The burial is based on a factual story, albeit considerable artistic license is used with the facts. Doug Wright's initial script, according to director Maggie Betts, was dated. The script was solid, but the point of view was archaic. It had the impression of being from the 1990s. One of the most major improvements was making sure the legal team had a black flavor and that none of the black characters had a need for white people in their life, in addition to updating the tone to more modern standards. Self-sufficient in every way. Who is awarded the case? The information that the Lowen Group was concealing was discovered and made public by Maggie Betts. She addressed the fact that no one had cared to investigate using made-up characters. Although the truth is revealed throughout the trial, it is not necessarily a narrative about race because each instance of injustice is more stunning than the previous one. Ultimately, Lowen Group did exploit the black community, and this wouldn't have come to light if Jeremiah O'Keefe hadn't stood up for his minor grievance. When solicitors look hard enough, they may connect the dots and uncover anything. For this reason, standing up for what is right is crucial. O'Keefe and Gary prevail in court and earn a settlement that exceeds their expectations. In the end, Lewin Group consented to a $175 million settlement. After learning what Lowen had done, the jury decided in favor of Willie Gary's client, awarded them close to $500 million in damages, given the circumstances of the case and the jury's predominance of black members. Thank you once again for being a part of Flick Flash. Until next time, keep watching, keep exploring, and keep that movie and TV magic alive. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and stay tuned for more exciting recaps. This is Flick Flash, signing off.